And Monani Dumelang Tobela Abshene Huyamora, if you've just joined us, welcome to the South African Morning. Now we're on the Tabo Besta story. He's innocent. He's now been dragged into court for doing his job. And these are the sentiments of the family of accused number seven in the Tabo Besta escape saga. Former G4S control room operator Dia Homa Kotza is facing charges along the convicted rapist. Now, in an ENCA exclusive uh, report, uh, we have seen a report. Linda Lomasigana, uh, who sat down with the Makotza brother, and she joins us in studio. Good morning to you. Really morning, uh, great sir. to have you. Of course, you've been on the beat of the Tabo Besta story from the get-go. It's grabbed our attention. Everybody's just engrossed in it. Mm -hmm. What is the latest now with the accused number seven? So, of course, uh, we're trying to speak to anyone and everyone uh, who may know the accused, who may know some of the accused role players, um, and, of course, um, who else then family itself. So um, we had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to speak to the father of accused number three, that is Deboko Dupolu. He's the CCTV technician who allegedly switched off the cameras um, on the night of the escape. We've now spoken to the brother of accused number seven, that is Diego Makotza. Uh, from what we understand is that he is one of uh, two uh, control room operators, uh, G4S control room operators, who was there on the night on duty. And uh, according to his family, uh, they believe that in essence he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. He just happened to be doing his job, and uh, they believe um, that, uh, in essence, he's innocent, and they actually want to appeal uh, the judgment that uh, denied him his bail. So um, at this point, from what we've gathered, is that Deho Makota, uh, you know, he's just somebody who grew up in quite a poor family. Uh, he managed to be able to go to university. According to his family, he's somebody who uh, has never broken the law. He's somebody who has never problematic as a child. Uh, in fact, uh, he just wanted to be able to provide uh, for his family. And in fact, in 2000, that is when he uh, got the job at G4S um, and started working at the Mangawung prison to be able to provide for his family. Uh, his family also says that they found out that he was suspended last year um, in relation to this uh, matter. And of course, at the time, uh, what was known was that Besta had allegedly um, died right in that cell. And a couple of the employees at Mangawung were suspended uh, for that particular incident. And of course, this year, news breaking that, of course, it wasn't um, actually, he, he didn't die. He actually just faked his own death and escaped. And, and that's the thing. There's so many layers to the story and it just keeps unraveling yeah. uh, almost on a daily. But a control room operator is, in essence, somebody who would have a desktop view yeah. of what goes on in the prison, which doors are opened, etc. Exactly, exactly. Um, how would have accused number seven, and not to, to you know, um, cast any aspersions in terms of his innocence or guilt, mm. but a control room operator essentially just presses the buttons, yeah. isn't it? So that's where his family is, is, um, is coming from. They're saying um, on that night of the escape, from what we understand from the evidence that's been brought before court, because remember during the bail applications, we saw the state bringing one of the investigating officers um, to testify in opposition of bail. This is where we got to learn how each and every accused had been implicated um, um, in this escape and what their alleged role was. So in terms of Diego Makotza and Nastasia Janssen, they were the control room operators on the night of the escape and they're accused of in essence opening the gates allowing for Bester to escape that night and we know that on that night when Bester escaped he was dressed as a G4S employee in uniform so the argument from the lawyers as well as the families of these two accused is that um, they were merely under the impression that uh, they were uh, opening the gates for a uh, an employee of the prison obviously um, a colleague and they were under the instruction um, of their supervisor to open um, those gates so um, we spoke to the brother of the Makotza, that is Taylor. Uh, this is just a little bit of what he's had to say um, in the interview that we will air, of course, later on um, on the channel. Let's take a listen. No, I uh, believe uh, so. I believe according to the evidence before the court. According to the evidence before the court, I see my brother. I hear we hear that he was in the uh, control room with uh, a certain Natasha, they were in the control room, and then they saw the smoke from that, that position where they were. Now, I don't believe him to be 
involved in this thing because now, because it could not, it, it could not be at the same, at the second two places at the same time. No, uh, he has not explained that money because this money, when, when this the, this matter uh, uh, arises, he was already in the prison cell. Now we we, we couldn't find a time for him to explain that, uh, and and we didn't want to ask about those things while he's still under their supervision. Mm. He could not have done that 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 thing. Uh, Maybe on the basis of fourteen thousand that uh, has been seen in his bank statement, uh, the fourteen thousand could have been borrowed. Fourteen thousand could have we, we borrow, we borrow from our colleagues. Mm -hmm. We we are always we are indebted. We always borrow from our colleagues. Mm -hmm. If I know colleague is having money, borrow me. Then when I know he's got money, I borrow. Then I bring back. So we continue our discussion with senior reporter Selinda Lomasigana on the latest developments in the Tabo Pesta escape saga, accused number seven now uh, facing uh, charges. And But you were saying his family says uh, he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. What are the actual mm. charges? So the charges that he's facing are uh, defeating the ends of justice, um, uh, fraud, um, arson, which is one that they're also disputing in terms of uh, his family saying, but he was in the control room. How can he be charged with, with arson, with, um, you know, starting the fire that was um, in Bester's cell? So um, you would have heard that in the interview, the brother refers to a payment of about a 14,000 rand amount which was found in his um, account and the state is alleging that this was the payment that Makosa received for his role um, in this escape and his family is saying that that money could have been for anything uh, he could have been borrowing that money from one of his colleagues uh, you know it's 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 not a practice that is foreign amongst colleagues if you you know you need money um, and so I did ask him in, in fact you know was Makosa going through any financial difficulties could have been could he could he have been you know you know forced in 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 terms of his um, own financial woes and he says while he was working at G4S at that prison um, he did not have any financial difficulties the difficulties only arose after he was fired from work yeah mm -hmm. and, and while we're intrigued of course with the details of the story as you um, you know attend court cases and we more and more as revealed their families mm -hmm. who are very concerned these are loved ones to them they're yeah. not accused number seven exactly it's actually a brother it's a son, etc., yeah. uh, and they are there feeling the pain, mm. uh, and I suppose the shame as well. Absolutely, it's one of the questions I posed to Taylor Makosa, um, asking him, "How are you as a family coping? You know, having to uh, see your brother um, in this particular situation, knowing him and his character, and and uh, believing that he's he's innocent, and you know that he's saying that uh, you know as a family they can't throw him away." Um, this is their this is their son. This is their brother. They're going to support him. They believe in his innocence, and they're hoping that at some point the courts will also um, clear him of these charges that he is facing. And so at this point, um, you know, his family does continue to support him. Goes to the court appearances, um, and uh, you know. He's got a wife, he's got children, um, and they're saying that at this point they're just, you know, a praying family, um, and uh, they're just trying mm -hmm. to support him through this period. So, Sly, when does uh, the uh, full interview air? So we will be airing the full interview tomorrow on the channel. Um, but, of course, we will be giving our viewers just snippets to this interview throughout the day. And, of course, uh, we know that the accused uh, will be back in court uh, in about a month's time on the 8th of August. But, of course, uh, at this point, we've got nine accused in the dock. But uh, we've already heard in terms of the last um, appearance of the nine accused that the state believes that there could be the possibility of at least three more arrests um, in this matter. So between now and August, we may see more accused um, being implicated um, in this particular saga. We really appreciate you coming so Thank early you, <laughs> uh, and we really appreciate your work as well. Thank you so much. You. That is ENCA senior reporter Slinde Lomasikane uh, speaking to us about the latest in the Tabo Besta escape saga because they're back in court, as she said, on the 8th of August.